Hello and welcome to a quick van travel vlog. This is going to be a one night overnight trip down to the furthest southeastern point of the country and I literally mean the furthest point. If I went any further I'd fall into the sea, into the English Channel. I'm heading down to Deal in Kent uh, to see some friends, former colleagues, people I used to work with when I worked in local radio. Haven't seen them in several years now I think about it and they're having a bit of a New Year's lunch thing and they invited me along which is lovely. It's over 220 miles, it's mostly some dreadful motorways, M1, M25 around London, M2 through Kent, so it's straightforward but depending on the motorways could either be easy or just a nightmare. Let's find out. After a little toing and froing I joined the M6 near Birmingham and headed east. There's quite a complex junction here, with the M6, M42 and M6 Toll all swapping lanes with each other. It's always a relief when there's little traffic around and I can hop between the lanes with no problems. An hour or so later and I came off the M6 onto the M1, heading south now towards London. 90 minutes later and I came off the M1 onto the infamous M25 orbital motorway around London. I took the east side, and this is a random sample of a bit of it going through a tunnel roughly in the northeast corner of London. Up to the QE2 bridge at Dartford, which goes over the Thames. This is a toll bridge, if you don't know, and you have until midnight the next day to pay £2 for me in the camper van. That's looking west towards London. And that's southeast towards Kent. This is when it all looked like it had gone wrong. A massive jam as soon as I turned onto the M2. But it turns out this was all bargain hunters trying to get to the Blue Water Shopping Centre. This was December the 29th, so the post Christmas sales were on. I can think of nothing I'd like less than both trying to get to and then shop at Blue Water just after Christmas. An hour or so later I was in East Kent on the A2 heading towards Dover. This is very familiar territory for me. I used to work here when I was a local news reporter. And here I'm practically at Dover. Yes, the one with the white cliffs and the birds. It's straight ahead but I'm going left at the roundabout towards Deal. For my overseas viewers, this is very typical of a British A road. One lane each way, a bit twisty in parts, lots of signs, speed changes and speed cameras, and other roads joining onto it, so a fair bit to watch out for. It wasn't long until I was on the coast road at Walmer, adjacent to Deal. The sea is on the right behind those buildings. and I was lucky to find a spot in this busy car park. Welcome to Deal Beach on a cold winter's day. That's the pier. I'll come back to that later. I had to get a move on at this point to meet my friends for lunch. And they were to be found in a pub looking out over the sea just there. This is the pub. My friend Joe is practically a resident there. As it was Christmas time, all the decorations were up. Very festive. I perused the menu while we waited for the final member of the team to arrive. Well, that was just great. Really nice to see my friends again. Hadn't seen them for at least four, four and a half years. Good old catch up. I didn't actually film us having the catch up because that was private social time. But uh, we've all gone our separate ways now and I have parked up on the seafront. I used the Park for Night app 
to locate a spot and they said there were several places along here which there are. I'm on a slight slope, the road just gently curves away towards the edge so I'll be rolling to one side overnight but I'm overlooking the sea so it's quite a nice spot. The van is all set for night mode with this blanket hung over a rail here to give me a blackout to the front. I really must get some proper curtains here. It's going to be easy enough to do but for the moment a blanket suffices. And of course I've put the insulated blackout blinds into the back and side windows as well. Here's where I am in relation to the town which is directly down that road ahead. I get the feeling this is quite a busy road so it might be noisy overnight. Certainly the Park for Night app had comments saying that, but we'll find out. It is December after all. And although it's only four o'clock in the afternoon, it is starting to get dark. I'll do more filming tomorrow morning before I leave, but again, this is the view out, some sort of sailing club directly opposite, with the beach to the right of that. Pier in the distance. That's the English Channel looking out towards France and Belgium. There is a cracking sunset going on over there, but I can't really see it for the buildings. It's dark outside and it's only half past four. There's only one thing you can do at a time like this and that is, of course, make a cup of tea. A dash of milk, no sugar other than the chocolate bar perfect cuppa. I then used the kettle as my entertainment stand and switched on the latest video from Peter and John, the RV geeks. There's a link to their channel in the description. Well, I've watched a little YouTube, I've watched a little Netflix. I haven't been out to experience Deal's nightlife. I'm not the kind of person who can just happily march into a pub on my own and start chatting to random folk. It's all very well going in with a group of friends, but I'm not someone who does it alone, so I haven't been out. It's 9.30 now. I'm toasty and warm, though. I've had the heater on just for about 10 or 15 minutes every couple of hours, and that has kept me perfectly warm. I think I shall now go to bed. Good night. Good morning. I slept all right, actually, not bad, although there were a handful of vehicles that went absolutely belting down this road overnight, way breaking the speed limit, I think, and the whole van buffeting and shaking as they zoomed by. Never mind, uh, it didn't really seem to bother me too much. I slept okay. One thing I definitely do need to buy is some little, um, I don't know what you call them, stands that you drive the vehicle up onto so as to balance out one side of the vehicle over the other so as to make it level because I'm definitely on a slope and was gently gently sliding sideways overnight so some of those little stands you drive up onto I need to get some of those. Apart from that all's good I'm going to have a wee. Uh, too much information I should point out I do have the porta potty in the van I won't be just going outside and I'll have a bit of a basic wash and scrub up, bit of breakfast, and then I shall poke my head outdoors. Wow, what a beautiful morning. Gorgeous out there. Breakfast is served. Before I go then, let's have a quick look around the centre of Deal. I imagine the Sea Cafe coffee shop is lovely in summer and bustling. I don't know if beach huts are a peculiarly British thing, but they are horribly, horribly expensive usually, given that they're essentially a garden shed plonked on a beach. Owned or rented, I think, by people for summer use. This is the local lifeboat station, the RNLI, Royal National Lifeboat Institution. 
Entirely charitable, no government funding at all, and that's the way they like it. And if I were stuck out at sea, I'd be very glad to see these guys and gals. Inside an Atlantic 85 lifeboat, so-called because it was developed at Atlantic College in Wales and is 8.5 metres long. It can zoom out to rescues at 35 knots, courtesy of these 215 horsepower engines, and can cope with up to 4-7 winds. It's launched on the back of a trailer, pushed down the beach by this tractor. You can see the doors ahead just open up and the boat gets pushed straight out. We've got the good wind sounds out here. Those tracks in the shingle are from when it's been launched. There's another smaller lifeboat here as well in that white hut. This is used for inshore work, like search and rescue at the bottom of cliffs. Let's potter along the coast path, a very popular spot for joggers, walkers and a lot of dogs. We come to a rather solemn place. This isn't just any town bandstand. It's a memorial to 11 Royal Marine musicians who were killed by an IRA bomb in 1989. Their names are marked around the base of the bandstand and there is a group that ensures the memorial is maintained. Even in Britain, where castles are ten a penny, having one smack in the middle of town is somewhat unusual but Deal boasts exactly that. Built by the order of King Henry VIII in 1539, it's one of a chain of coastal forts in the south and southeast of England. It was designed to have 140 guns pointing out to sea, but only ever reached a maximum of 57. It has a moat, but that's just recent rain. Pretty decent doors though, they'd look great on my boat. One thing you see a lot of on the shingle coasts down this way is small fishing boats. I don't know a lot about them unfortunately, but they do make for a very scenic image. If you're wondering how they get up onto the beach, which is quite high above the waterline, there are lines attached to the bow which run up to winches, some of which have engines and some appear to be hand cranked. Here's the Time Ball Tower, once part of a chain of shutter telegraph stations built in 1796, but the Time Ball, which drops every day at 1pm precisely, was added in 1855 so that ships moored nearby could check their chronometers. Finally on this quick tour, let's head to the pier again. A previous pier, which itself was actually the second to be built, was destroyed early in World War II, so this one was built in the 50s. It originally had three levels at the head, but according to the local council's website, and this is hilarious, a miscalculation of the tides means the lower level is permanently covered by the sea. That's a heck of a miscalculation. At the entrance, the statue's called Embracing the Sea. And this is what the pier looks like from the end. Shall we walk up? It does give you an excellent view of the beach. Every Boxing Day, a bunch of braver people than me swim here for charity. Not from the pier itself, of course, there's danger of death if you try that. Right at the end, as well as a cafe, you get a great view back at the town. 
and a chance to admire the concrete posts that hold the whole thing up, if you like concrete, that is. There's Belgium, home of waffles and chocolate. And with that, I hurried back to my van, noting I wasn't the only van person to have parked up where I did. And that's about it, I think. This really was just a flying visit to see my friends yesterday, but I thought a quick walk about this morning would be a nice idea. And it was a very pleasant walk. Lovely day. The van is now absolutely roasting hot in the sunshine. I've got a very long journey ahead of me. Again, probably about four hours or so. So I'm going to head off. Thank you very much for watching and cheerio.